Do you ever feel like your broadcast audio mix is just kind of missing something? Well, after reviewing thousands of live streams over the last couple of years, I think that there's a key word in that statement that many of us are missing, and that is that they are live streams. <laughs> Without audience mics to capture the room sound, you kind of are just making a studio recording on a multi-track digital mixer. So listen to the difference between these two recordings, one with the audience mics and one without. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are. Darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 So I'm learning and in the process of trying to really hone in the best mix for our live stream audience mics. The current setup that we have is two Behringer C2s, which are like 50 bucks for the pair, a matched pair. They're a cardioid mic that we have flown in our top bar behind our center array. So before we dive into some tips and techniques to get you the best ambient room mics for your mix, how about we just talk about why you need these in the first place. Well, it's obviously to hear the congregation responding, singing along, clapping. And what I found a common mistake for a lot of guys is that we put these into the mix, we hang them up, and we just set them and forget them, and we think that that's going to create a good mix. But you don't really want these that loud whenever it's a full band moment because you're going to capture a lot of just the PA in the room. These are really meant to shine whenever it's a down part and you can hear the congregation singing. Unless you have uh, thousands of people in your uh, arena or large church, you're probably going to have a tough time getting their voices, like a choir, up over the PA to mix in there. But there are some strategies to help with that, and we'll talk about those in just a minute. The other side benefit of these is that they're great for in-ear mixes for your band on stage. If you're like me, we have a silent stage, no wedges. And so channel 16 of our Behringer P16s are a submix, a bus of these audience mics. And they are just where we can mix them to taste. And really this helps people feel connected to the audience without having to just have one headphone in because we want both headphones in so that way we can actually hear things clearly without having to turn up that one ear and do damage to our hearing. I was guilty of that for years. So that's a great benefit of these ambient crowd audience mics. So let's talk about the three P's of audience mics. Number one is placement. Look in your room and see where the best place to hang these crowd mics would be. A lot of times people will put them on the sides of the stage, and that's okay a lot of times, but I think my preference really after testing has been to hang these directly behind my flown PA. So if you have a flown PA cluster or um, line arrays, if you can get these just behind those to where they're not catching the, the speakers, but right behind and pointing out to the audience, I think that's a great location. Uh, Michael Curtis says to aim them at the first third of the audience because people in the very back are gonna have a tough time getting picked up anyways. And so with these flown mics, we're gonna aim at the first third of the congregation. Now, the other thing to consider is if you do have live instrumentation like drums, uh, anything with actual acoustic properties on stage, stage monitors, don't put these mics right there next to those. If you can, avoid it. Now, if you can't avoid it, and really just talking about where to put them in general, the second P is what comes into play, and that is the pickup pattern of the microphone that you choose. There's different schools of thought around this. Uh, I really liked shotgun mics for a while. We had some AKGs that I'll show you four different mic tests in a moment. Um, and we had one go bad though, so I decided to pick up these Behringer C2s um, because 
Audience mics don't need the very best, but the pickup pattern is important. So a shotgun mic is gonna be very focused and directional. You might end up getting certain hot spots of the congregation, especially if you're on the side of the stage, just pointing out, you might catch a lot of certain singers, and that's really not what we want. That's really distracting to have that in your ears as the worship leader. We want a broad mix. A lot of times people will say more mics in the audience, uh, above the audience in different locations mixed lowly is a better mix. We don't have the luxury of that. Most of you are not gonna have the channel count to do that or the ability to hang multiple mics throughout your, your church. If you can, give it a try. Let me know in the comments how that works. But I prefer um, right now these Behringer C2s with just that cardioid pattern works really well. Super cardioid mics would work well too. The key here is that we're trying to reject noise from behind us and from the sides. Just that way, if you do have live drums, for instance, uh, reflections, you're really focusing the pickup pattern towards the source that you're wanting to capture. One other thought about placement of mics is that, you know, we have our mics up high there. You could have them on the corner and they're still gonna be pretty much time aligned. But when you start throwing mics in the mix, like these at your front of house station, now you're out of time alignment. And so you're gonna have to be delaying your stage mics now to match the front of house mics so that nothing's out of phase. Even with hanging mics out here in the room somewhere, if it's a bigger room, you're gonna run into those issues. So that's why I prefer not to use these mics because that's gonna catch mainly PA anyways. It's not pointing at the audience. So I would start with on that stage location. The third P that we're gonna talk about is processing on the board. But before we dive into that, let me just show you a quick mic test comparing four different microphones from this last Sunday. I set them up all on one stand, recorded them into my Zoom L8, and they're just gonna be normalized to where they're the same volume level, so that way you're not tricked by volume. So let me know in the comments which microphone you think sounds best for this application. Yeah. 
So the final P is processing. Let's talk about how to process these microphones and a couple of tips and tricks that I've learned from others that I'm implementing and trying to make this work even better. So let's go into the worship center. I'll show you on our M32, which would be the same thing for an X32, how I'm processing these to get the most out of them. All right, so the first thing you'll notice on our EQ section is that we have scooped out everything up to 400 and then a lot of upper end as well. You really don't need all of that information. You're just wanting to hear the vocals of the congregation, applause, things like that. So that's gonna you know, be more in this range. This was just a little troublesome frequency in our room. And so don't worry about having the absolute best mic because you're gonna be taking away a lot of the information anyways. Now one trick that I've been using is parallel compression. So what you can do is add a compressor to your crowd mics, but on page two, you set the key source as another channel, direct output, or in our case, a bus. And so we have all the drums on a bus. And my thought is that I really want the crowd mics to come up whenever the drums are usually going down. That means it's a down part of the song and I might be able to hear the people singing more. And so you're gonna set the key source to that, whatever that may be, hopefully a main bus, a drum bus, something like that. And then I've just played with some of these compression settings, basically playing back with the drums going. You're gonna see the levels here. So as the drums are playing, I'm setting the threshold to when the drums are active, it's knocking that audience mic down. Now, when the drums end here in a moment, you can see that I did add a little bit of gain to this. I played with release, hold, and attacks to make it a really smooth, long transition between this point. So here in a moment, the drums are gonna drop out and then our audience mics will start to come up in the broadcast mix. Now, the goal is not to make up the gain that you're losing here. A lot of times that's what you wanna do with a compressor. If you're knocking off 18 dB, you wanna make it up. But for us, we really are just trying to not have the audience mic as much whenever the drums are going. And then as the drums leave, it just brings it up. So one other trick or issue you might have is that you want the audience mics loud enough during the audience participating in worship time and song, but during preaching, maybe it just seems a little too loud. What you could also do is implement the gate feature in ducking mode, and you would set the key source of the audience mics, still on the audience mics, the gate to your pastor's mic. So that way, as he talks, it actually can bring them down. And I would say the lowest is 3 dB, uh, and that, that seemed to work. But for us, I think we found a happy medium there. Just play with this and see what settings work best in your case. And remember, I'm no expert. I've just been tinkering and learning. So if you've got tips, give them to me. Well, there you go, guys. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have other tips and tricks you've learned along the way, would you just comment below with those? If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you want more from me, then hit the subscribe button. You'll get stuff on a weekly basis as I'm just documenting my worship journey as the Worship of Media Arts Pastor here at CBC Owasso. And if you need some one-on-one -on -one help, I do coaching calls that you can book. There's a link for those in the description. And lastly, there is a video that I will link to up in the corner where I go through our most recent uh, iteration of our broadcast mix. If you want to go there, there's a free template available as well for the M32. Well, remember, guys, we can do a lot of great things. Let's do it all for God's glory. We'll see you in the next one.